Ladies and gentlemen, I want to start by talking about porn. Um, <laughs> not actual pornography itself. I want to talk about the word porn and the way it is now being used, especially by journalists. People have started attaching it to other words, so you get phrases like property porn and food porn and car porn. This is an example, if you know what I'm talking about. This is the New York Daily News. It's an article about Top Gear, and as you can see, they've captioned a photograph of little Richard Hammond and a fancy car with the phrase, Total Car Porn. <laughs> yeah, cars, eh? Four vans, oh, yeah. <laughs> And they've reviewed the show as a visually pleasing hour of car porn. And then you get this in the Daily Beast, looking at the problem with food porn tourism. And of course, there is property porn, which according to the Mail, is the UK's favourite new guilty pleasure. And here's someone in Stylist talking about how she's now addicted to property porn. Property porn is even in the dictionary. There it is. <laughs> A genre of escapist TV programmes showing desirable properties, especially those in idyllic rural locations or in need of renovation. <laughs> Don't you see the problem here? If you're going to have property porn and food porn and car porn, then actual porn is going to have to be called sex porn. <laughs> Otherwise, how are you going to distinguish one from the other? It's not as if there aren't plenty of examples of sex porn involving cars and food, is it? <laughs> there is basically a sex porn subgenre for absolutely everything. I mean, if you search for the phrase car porn on Google, two out of the top three links are for car porn sex porn. <laughs> All of the rest are for car porn, car porn. <laughs> you can't take the word porn away from the pornographers. It's all they've got. <laughs> Having said all this, I do like property porn. I didn't realise I liked it, but I've been analysing my life and I've realised how much of it I watch. I've got Netflix, Sky TV, Amazon Prime, thousands of hours of amazing box sets are available to me at the press of a button, and yet I watch Escape to the Country. <laughs> I watch Homes Under the Hammer. I love Homes Under the Hammer. Do you know who my favourite person on the Homes Under the Hammer team is? It's the music editor. He or she is the real star of the show for me. If you've never seen it, and I know you have, but if you've never seen it, it is a property auction show. It's about people buying houses at auction and we see how they renovate them and whether or not they make money and so on. But they have the most amazing background music. In fact, background music isn't really the right phrase. It's not mood music. It's not there to affect you emotionally in some way. It's just that 15 seconds of a pop classic will suddenly fade in and then out for no reason. <laughs> it is used to pinpoint a word that's just been said. <laughs> I'll give you an example, right? This is Martin Roberts, right? I love Martin Roberts. Martin Roberts is my favourite celebrity in the world. <laughs> And here he is explaining what needs to be done to this particular property. Straight away, one of those classic properties where you can add so much value by just doing the basics. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I think in this example, you could add so much value by just running around with a wet sponge. But, <laughs> but he goes on to explain that the basics in this case include doing the electrics. And the moment he said that, the music editor knows exactly what to do. And that's it, it's done, it's that, that's, that's all that happens. They just do that and then it's gone. Here's another one, this is one of the other presenters setting up a real beauty. Uh, but something I'll never tire of, I love a game of tennis and I just think that has got to be one of the best views, looking out of this beautiful sash window out onto the tennis courts. Amazing! Yeah, look at that view, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Four vans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you can already hear the music warming up. Any guesses as to what tune is about to play? We know it's about tennis, what's it going to be? Any guesses? Wimbledon. Wimbledon? Any others? No? It is the well-known Chris Rea classic. Yes, I do. <laughs> what the hell is going on there? What the hell is that? It's amazing, isn't it? Incidentally, I, I don't know if any of you spotted the detail there. It is worth just dipping back into this one just to show you the detail. Look at this. Yes, I do. What the hell's going on there? 
There's a man pissing in a bush. This is daytime for crying out loud. What the hell is that? This next one, this is my favourite example ever. I absolutely adore this. Uh, it is worth pausing to acknowledge that that man is former Premier League footballer Dion Dublin, <laughs> who has joined the show in its 19th series as one of the new presenters. That is the strangest career trajectory I've seen in a while. <laughs> this is the clip. Have a look at this. You could actually knock that wall down, have the diner and the kitchen all as one. Great family space, and the parties always end up in the kitchen. Ah. <laughs> he has set that up pretty perfectly, hasn't he? Anyone know where we're going next? Jonah Louie, Jonah Louie all the time in the kitchen at parties? You're wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> they are crazy cats at Holmes and the Hammer. This is what happens next. And the parties always end up in the kitchen. When it's time to party, we will party. <laughs> what the hell is going on there? <laughs> what the hell is that? Do you know, I'll tell you what that is. That is a song by a man called Andrew W.K. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the video from Home Done the Hammer <laughs> at the top of the screen, and I'm going to put the Andrew WK Rock video at the bottom of the screen, and I'm going to run them concurrently. You will probably find your eyes get drawn into the rock video. Every time you feel that happening, try and remember to look up and see what pictures the people at Home Done the Hammer thought were an appropriate accompaniment to this music. I promise you the combination is absolutely amazing. And the parties always end up in the kitchen. When it's time to party, we will party hard. How amazing is this? This is at 10 o'clock in the morning on BBC One. Do you know the, the thing I admire most about Holmes and the Hammer? is how much television they are able to make with so little content. You don't really notice how little is happening normally. But I was watching it one morning, a little while ago, uh, and the phone rang. And I didn't turn the TV off, I just muted it while I took the call. And every now and then, I'd look up. It was really instructive watching it with the sound down. You suddenly realise how little show there actually is. Every time I looked up, it was just footage of a stranger walking into a room awkwardly, <laughs> looking at the ceiling, saying nothing, and then walking out again. <laughs> There's just loads and loads of this. <laughs> it's, it's all it is. It's really spooky if you haven't got the context of the weird music and the voiceover that they're adding to it. If you watch one with the music and the sound, it sort of makes sense. Sometimes there's more than just simple profit to be considered. So now that Jag is master of his own time, what does he intend to do with the property? <laughs> Just a man walking into a room, forgetting what he's come in for, <laughs> and then going out again. Just to illustrate how weird that footage is, I'm going to show it to you again, but this time I've taken their music off. I've taken the voiceover off. I've replaced the sound with what I think is sort of authentic, actual sound. It takes a bit of listening. Listen closely. That's what we let wash over us on a weekday morning. Mahesh and Mayor are old friends, and Mayor, who has property developing experience, has been advising Mahesh on how best to develop his auction purchases. And now, with Gorman sound. <laughs> anyone behave like that in real life? <laughs> but the thing is, they're very clever. They make you stay with the show. They hook you in. Sometimes I don't even think I'm watching it. I don't think I care what happens to a property. But I do. I, I must do. Because they never show you how someone's renovated the property immediately. They always tease you with it. The presenter will do a piece to camera where he'll lean casually against a doorway, sort of like that, and, and say something like, well, Steve's got big plans for this place, but a very limited budget. So how will he get on? And then he says the magic words. <laughs> you can find out later in the show. And even though I didn't think I gave a shit, I find myself thinking, I will, I will, I'll find, I'll find out later in the show. Sometimes I don't even hear the words. I just have a Pavlovian reaction to the music that follows them. 
You can find out later in the show. That is enough. The minute I hear that theme, I know that somebody has just said, find out later in the show, and I want to find out even if I don't know what it's about. <laughs> Once I've heard that music, I can't not watch. It is a very, very powerful technique.